Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 388, written by Not Your Mama. Can you imagine the horror of a fudgesicle disappearing? Okay, this has bothered me for years. My family was moving out of our home, my middle son was starting college, and my husband had to start a new job. I stayed at our home with our 12 year old daughter. I was waiting for movers and then we were getting on the road ourselves. On the first day the mover came, I asked them to leave one mattress and said I would pack the small TV in my car. So they have packed up about 85% of the house. All that is left in my bedroom is the mattress and they are going to get that the next day. A blanket and the TV. I need to clean out the fridge so I asked my daughter if she wants the last fudge sickle. She is sitting on the mattress near the wall and I toss it to her. So the fudge sickle bounces off her hands and hits the wall. We both see this and look at the floor. We logically know that the fudge sickle must be there, except it isn't. I move the mattress. I even go grab a book and toss it to her, hoping to recreate the path this dessert has taken. We are both losing our minds. The furniture is gone, so it cannot be hiding. Also, it's a frozen chocolate fudgesicle and I have a light carpet that I have to shampoo tomorrow before we pull up the stakes and move. We never found it. The movers came, I cleaned all the carpets, it did a walkthrough with the agency that was going to rent out this house for us. Still, no fudgesicle, no stain to clean up, no wrapper, no stick, no nothing. My daughter, now 20, recalls this very clearly and has brought it up as the weirdest thing to have ever happened to her. We still have no idea how or why. I'm pretty sure my daughter in an alternate dimension has a story about how I had nothing in my hand and a fudgesicle landed on her. Case Notes, file number 388. Oh, so another classic disappearing object phenomenon. The only glitch I've experienced, twice now, but this time with food. And you know, that actually terrifies me, because if food starts disappearing, well, we're in trouble, aren't we? And this is such an awesome version of it because, as you say, it's a fudgesicle. If someone would just say, well, okay, nothing's really disappearing. It's just that things are bouncing away, like under something that you just didn't check. Well, in this case, you were moving. So literally everything was taken out and there was no place for anything to hide to have bounced off to into a deep, dark crevice. And even if that was the case, it would have melted. You would have seen a puddle of chocolate deliciousness somewhere, but there just wasn't anything. No stain on the carpet, as you say, no nothing. The only place he could have gone is wherever things go when they disappear. Case file number 389, written by Potty Animal. UFO strips near an Air Force base. My father had a sighting of a large, bright, round light in the sky south of Kansas City in the vicinity of Richards Gebar Air Force Base. He was driving to his job at a grocery store when he saw it and thought, eh, must be the moon. But when he came to a clearing and could see it better, he saw that it was at least twice as big as the biggest full moon he'd ever seen. He pulled over to look at it and watched it as it slowly erased from the bottom. He says that it looked like perfect horizontal strips were being removed from it, like being erased from a chalkboard. It took about 5 minutes for it to disappear. He told a friend at work about the sighting, but didn't think much of it until a week later when two nurses called in to his favorite radio talk show, The Mike Murphy Show, a great morning talk show at the time. Mike was a big UFO slash paranormal fan and reported seeing the same thing. This was in the late 80s or early 90s. He's told the story many times over the years and still doesn't know what he saw. He is 82 now and still wishes he could find out. Does anyone have any idea what it could have been? He insists it wasn't the moon. I've tried to google it a few times, but it's hard to describe in a search engine. Case Notes, file number 389. So I would say, okay, I love aliens, I love the idea of aliens, but this doesn't mean that every UFO is an alien spacecraft. They're just unidentified flying objects. It could simply be that this was some sort of military test. And I think often that is the case, not always, but I think often. And it makes sense too, because often these UFOs are reported near Air Force bases. They probably are secret military deployments of advanced technology. Case file number 390, 
written by shadows that bind, elevators out of place, dates that don't bond, and cancer that just vanishes. There are two events that I can't shake. I apologize in advance if this bores anyone, but I don't think it will. The first, if you look at my post history, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer early in the year. I asked for a second opinion from the UCSF, and soon after, a friend recommended juicing and visualization. I rolled with it, but every time I practiced my visualization, I couldn't stop picturing doctor after doctor coming into the room, amazed at the little lump having disappeared. The thought of something that serious just vanishing and several doctors at a busy facility running in to see the freak show seemed too absurd for me to entertain. Flash forward to the day of my second biopsy, and that's exactly what happened. Except while it's incredibly rare, a small percentage of people experience an obliteration of the nodule after a biopsy. So while that threw me off, it was the experience in the elevator that still has me perplexed. I entered one directly across from the front desk. It got stuck between floors, and when it started up again, it was now down the hall and to the left. The second, I have kept journals since childhood. Currently, they are kept in a locked chest and in a locked room. They never leave that room, and they certainly have never been held by anyone else. Going back through some a few weeks ago, I found that an entry had a different date next to it. That's not my handwriting. The date I wrote is circled. The other is not my handwriting. I know my handwriting. I have a carbon monoxide detector too. I don't drink or do drugs, and I don't have DID. When I look at my Google Calendar, the date written is the only date that's blank. Bonus file, written by Polk's a little cat. The strangest questions from a little child. So last night, I was taking my five-year-old son to a trick-or-treat at a church. There really isn't much to do in this town. We had been arguing about music. Mommy, are murder murders real? He asked out of nowhere. Yes, baby. Sometimes people kill other people. Will I get murder murdered? He asked sadly. No, baby. It's my job to keep you safe. I thought this would be the end of it. It wasn't. But what if you get shot in the belly? He asked specifically. Mommy's belly is pretty big. I would have to go to the hospital, but I'd probably be fine. But what if you shot the gun that's really a cannon and turn your belly to fire? You probably wouldn't be fine. Uh, we don't have those here. I thought that would be the end of it. Mommy, do they have murderers in the desert? He then asked. Yes, they have murderers in the desert. Oh, he got quiet. The last time I got murdered, I was really in the mountains high above the desert. I had a gun that was really a cannon, but it broke and fell apart. It just fell apart and I couldn't get it back together. That's when I got murdered. It would be sad if I got murdered again. Um, okay. I then turned on Lizo, which is his favorite. He was pretty quiet for the rest of the ride. We live in the deep south USA. He has never been to a desert. Bonus file, written by Mysterious Front 233. When a ghost isn't sure how she feels about you. About a month ago, my boyfriend and I traveled back to his home country to visit family and friends for the first time since the pandemic hit. We stayed with his father who had cared for his mother and stepfather in their apartment until their fairly recent passing, and we stayed in grandma's room. This all happened on the first days of our trip. As soon as I started unpacking into the closet and drawer, I felt this very angry energy. I assumed she was confused as to who I was, we'd only met a couple times while she was alive, and her mind was not all there when we did meet. But she quite liked me then. Anyways, after I unpacked, I tried to get my boyfriend to also unpack, hoping that would ease the anxiety of the ghost that was very unhappy with my presence in her living space. But before he could unpack, as we were relaxing in the room, feeling jet-lagged, the bar that holds the hangers in the closet suddenly falls and crashes to the floor. My boyfriend fixes it. He doesn't believe in ghosts or anything, so I don't tell him my suspicions. But even he's weirded out by what happened. Later, when picking out clothes for our night out, I end up grabbing a clump of what I can only assume was her hair in the drawer. Very gross. Super did not like that. During the night as we were sleeping, 
the alarm clock on my nightstand starts going off at like 3 a.m. Now, there is no good reason an alarm should be set for that time, so it was definitely an assault on my sleep schedule. Also that night, I had some sleep terrors. I kept seeing slash feeling someone standing at the end corner of our bed, staring at us. In the morning, the closet falls again, but I go about my day normally, trying not to acknowledge the presence. I interacted with my boyfriend's dad, played with the dog which was her dog, and throughout the day I felt the energy relax. There wasn't an angry voice in my ear anymore. At the end of the day, I found an earring next to my bed, where the night terror figure had been the night before. I took the earring and placed it on the nightstand. It was probably a peace offering, and I was happy to see it. I didn't take the earring or wear it or anything, but I made sure it stayed on the night table the whole trip. Nothing happened after those two days, but it's definitely the closest I've ever come to an actual physical ghostly experience.